two, one, go. Hi everyone, it's Ono here, one more week, and we're gonna get right off with the live stream. For those of you who are new, I will let you know that this is an attempt to make creative machine intelligence for designers. If you already know us or you like the channel, please go ahead and like the video and subscribe if you're not subscribed yet to get notified when I upload new videos or when I go live next. You can also join us on Discord. There is an invite here, none of the masters Discord and also a QR code. There's a lot of uh, people already there. And as a quick recap, we did uh, two weeks last, uh, last week. So that was live 74, which uh, cover a mixed bag of things. I saw Imogen from Google and a few other things. We'll do a write up on the blog. And then it's nice to see you in person, which was a Getting Simple podcast live episode, which I actually re-recorded later and edited and released on Tuesday. So it was uh, two days ago. And yeah, so that's live stream 74 and 75. I'm also publishing a write-up of live stream 70. I have to catch up. So live stream 70 will be on the blog on Sunday. And on Monday, there will be a video that will go out on basically what we did in live stream 70, which is a... Uh, like a shorter, a shortened version of the um, how to upload videos to YouTube using the YouTube Data API in Python. All right, as always, feel free to send any questions that you might have as a voice note at gettingsimple.com slash ask. You can also submit voice notes for this live stream. And for the goals, I'm uh, trying to work with people to delegate certain tasks of the podcast and the live stream. This is something that I'm going to continue mentioning a lot because it's uh, one of my big efforts this year to try to collaborate with other people. And um, I keep talking about a community call. I don't know when that's going to happen. I've also been uh, setting up all the, the things here. So let's see, we have uh, here, I have this background. So... I've been trying to set up all of this, um, the studio, the lighting, uh, it's getting hotter here in Malaga and uh, the lighting and the, uh, all the things are, it's a bit challenging, but I think we're getting pretty good. I, I just need some um, color balancing and also probably some cooling here at the studio. All right, and with that said, let's go back to the presentation here. And what are we gonna do today? I have been having a kind of open topic live stream for some time. I have ordered recently the um, Elgato Stream Deck. So let me say here, let me add a marker. All right, today we're gonna take a quick look at the beginning of the live stream, at the Stream Deck Excel, this is something I've bought but I haven't received yet. And uh, the thing is, I'm gonna try to improve a bit the workflow I have to live stream and to podcast and for some other things. I'm let me show you what the the Stream Deck is. Right, so we go here and Google. Um, Stream Deck MK2, not that one. So the XL. This device from Elgato is a, basically it's like a custom keyboard that allows you to, to set, let me see if I can frame this properly. All right. I have to say it's a bit cheaper on, um, so, this is not uh, like an ad or anything. I haven't been paid to talk about this product. This is something I'm buying, uh, investing on, on my with my money. And I'm going to try it out. So this is a keyboard that you can customize. So each of those icons can be an action or it can also be 
a folder with actions. So you can have multiple kind of workspaces, let's say for each different workflow that you have. For example, imagine that you could have one for live streaming, one for podcasting, one for working with Photoshop, another one for audio editing, and uh, or maybe one for Zoom calls. And, you know, the idea is that I will be able to control things like OBS scenes or like um, the audio inputs or like sound effects from Farago or things for the podcast or muting microphones or things like this right from this stream deck. This, as I said, is um, a device that is uh, made by Elgato. And what this company does different peripherals. So I have here on the studio two lights from them and some arms for the camera. And what else? I have a like an HDMI uh, 4K device uh, that you know it's plugged right now to my camera setup, and it's what allows me to pipe the video from the Sony Alpha 6500. So you know it's a basically an investment to to see if this improves my my live streaming workflow in any way what they provide and you know if uh, you guys connect online please let me know if you can hear me okay if you can see me okay and uh, one thing that these guys have is you know if you go here they have different products and uh, one of the things that they have is the the SDK right so you can use it as a mobile app or as um, one of these different stream decks. So they have the Excel that is the one I'm buying, the deck, and then the new version of that one that has like a fixed mount here. And then the mini that only has three bottoms, right? Like this is three, 15, and 32. And, you know, you can buy a subscription for their app and then you get something similar with your phone. I don't know if it's only iPhone or if it's Android as well. And then you have the software and the SDK. So. I don't know what the SDK has, but I'm going to click on the software right now because I we can download it and then we can see what we can do, right? So select your product, Stream Deck Excel. So the Stream Deck Mobile is also available for iOS and Android. So this is a free app, but then you have to get an in-app purchase. And then here we have this Stream Deck version for Mac, compatible with all of the different Stream Decks. So I'm going to download it and I'm going to install it. So I don't have the device, as I said yet, but we're going to take a look at the software. So I'm going to add another marker here. And you know, one thing, for example, that I could do with this device is that I could click on the one of the bottoms or something and I could, I, I want to program something to make a, uh, a marker on the podcast. So later I know exactly where the chapters start. All right. And as I see that some of you guys are online now, um, could you tell me if you can see me okay, if you can hear me okay today? I've uh, played a bit with the setup, so things might have broken. So I would really appreciate if you tell me. All right, so let's take a look here and put my password there. So this is just installing Stream Deck on my machine. All right, and it seems like that worked. So I'm gonna minimize this and there we go. So we have the this application. So let maybe let's zoom in a bit so you guys can read it better. All right, um, I want to take a second to say hi to people in the chat. So Rob Bill and Monica C. And do you guys notice anything different on the lighting, on the, the color of the, of the screen or, or anything? So this is uh, one camera. If you might notice, I've changed the, um, 
So I've changed the background slightly. I'm trying a different background. And this is the one that I usually have. Does it look good? Uh, I, I just gonna get some feedback because I'm tweaking a bit the colors and the, the lightning, so the, the lighting arrangement. And uh, one thing that I've really improved is the chroma. So the chroma is now, uh, it doesn't have the um, kind of some shades on the, on the side. So if I switch off this light, you see, you can see that, yeah, I don't reach that one. Right, without these, uh, so without these two side lights, uh, this is what happens to the chroma. And this is what happens if I uh, switch them on. So I'm basically lighting the chroma, which is something that I was doing before with my two front um, lights. And uh, it works really well. This is a tip that I got from Nicola Capilli, that is a photographer from, from here, from Malaga. I mean, he's from Italy, but he lives here in Malaga. So, um, yeah, so that that's pretty cool. And we can maybe leave uh, these backgrounds here and get back here. All right, so this is the arrangement. I think uh, Rob says connection speed 9,588 kbps. So, yeah, we're on track. <laughs> Okay, so what do we have here? So this is a stream deck and I watched a video yesterday that talks about many predecessors and other options that people have. There has been also a history of people getting custom keyboards, making them or maybe buying them and then having to print and cut out and paste uh, different labels to the um, to each of the keys and then mapping those keys to to some shortcuts that they want to do. And this basically allows you to to have a, a, the device actually has a like a screen, right? And you can map an icon to each uh, bottom. So drag an action from the right and drop it on an empty key above. All right, so for example, here I see we have game capture, which I'm not, really doing we have obs it talks about obs scenes mixer audio record stream and source soundboard play audio stop audio i don't know if this is a specific one stream deck uh, these probably are functions that come with the with the tool create folder we're gonna try some of these now Streamlabs desktop this is I think it's a fork of OBS. So it's like a different version that is, I think it's a um, paid version of OBS. System, so website, hotkey, hotkey, open, text, multimedia, Twitter, control center. Oh, so this, for example, uh, is probably gonna be good for me to have different setups for for the lights um basically the, these lights that i have here because they're elgato they get control from control center which is right above here right so this is control center so probably it's going to allow us to tweak a bit the um, the brightness and, and the color temperature and things like this and which lights are on or off we have twitch studio which i don't use because we're not streaming on twitch and i think that's it so this is the default and I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so, and then the, you have this icon, we have the preferences and the Stream Deck store. Let's take a look at the preferences first. Check for updates, um, brightness. So this is to customize the device. We haven't, we don't have any devices. Accounts, I guess like this is to synchronize. Okay, so YouTube, Twitch, Streamlabs, uh, we'll have to see what this is for. I'm not sure. This is prompting me to continue to Elgato. Right, let me see what happens if I allow Elgato to access my YouTube account. Your account is now set up. Yeah, I'm not sure what that is for, but we'll look it up. 
we have different profiles so maybe this is useful for you know podcasting profile or like live streaming podcast um, profile a fair amount of latency uh, how do you know is it because of the um, of the time so the the time here or I'm not sure um, all right so and yeah so I guess like we don't have a device so this doesn't stream deck is powered by Qt I don't know what Qt is and we can have pages and then we can have you know we can go to the stream deck store and in here i guess there is going to be like a ton of things to be used so there's like icons plugins music sound effect okay so you do stats for nerds tells you latency okay yeah i've never actually checked at the latency but i guess i guess like we can so if you can tell me for example if i say i'm gonna start counting and you tell me the number that you can hear right so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen twenty Okay, so that's been plenty. If you haven't heard it, maybe you didn't, you heard it, but if, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess I, I cannot go back in time. So if you do it, you do it. I'll be checking the chat. All right. So yeah, I don't know what the latency actually means, but let, let's take a quick look here at this plugins, right? So Twitch Studio comes installed by default, which, you know, I, for example, I don't need that one. Twitch, always be on time. Toggle the mute for audio sources such as microphones or speakers. Streamlabs. What is this plugin's most popular? Control YouTube. Philips Hue. Control your Philips Hue lights. That's nice. Discord. Control Discord. Zoom plugin. Ah, this one is nice. Spotify integration, stocks. All right, so I guess, you know, I guess like there is a ton here and I'll have to take a look. Oh, nice, toggle. Okay, so wants to control keynote. All right, so as you can see, there are a ton of 
applications. So I guess if we look at streaming, we have stream controller, audio, Hmm, this might be pretty useful. I mean, this is seems like what the um, touch bar should be for, but I don't think I use that. Right, so timestamp, keep detailed records of events during multi-hour stream or education sessions, create session logs and insert unlimited custom timestamps with a tap of a key. Hmm, this one is nice. All right, so let's leave the store here and I'm just gonna test out if I can play with this from my computer. So let's say scene. The Elgato remote control plugin is missing. Please reinstall Stream Deck, then try again. Okay, let me. So this might be that. Okay, let me try again. So Stream Deck. Elgato remote control plugin. Please reinstall Stream Deck. Maybe I need to do that for. Hmm. Okay, let's try that. OBS Studio Stream Deck plugin. If you already have OBS Studio installed prior to installing Elgato, no additional step will be needed. To confirm, check that Elgato Stream Deck plugin is visible in the Tools menu. Elgato Stream Deck plugin tools. All right, so here we might have a an issue because because um i do have the obs version like uh, it's not officially released so i'm not sure if these plugins are still not available so i might you know i might have to yeah it might not work yet because i don't have that Yeah, I don't know. So it seems Elgato OBS Studio plugin M1. All right, I put the Stream Deck plugin so in the following path OBS Contents plugins. And I got the remote control plugin is missing. Hmm. Quit OBS, quit the Stream Deck app, launch OBS, launch the Stream Deck app, 
select an OBS in key to confirm quit OBS. All right, so the problem is, it seems like even if this works, I do need to restart OBS, which I cannot do because I'm using it to live stream at the moment. So I'm just gonna ignore this and try to see if we can try other features, you know, in in Stream Deck before we move on to some other topics. And here, so maybe for the people who are online, you can tell me what you've been up to lately. What are you working on or what have you been taking a look at if you've uh, discovered any new machine learning models or any new papers? or just what you're, you know, what you're up to. Right, so if I if I open Keynote and if I open, so let's say we go to the very beginning, so the first slide. Okay, and I then double click here. It's supposed to be next slide, so maybe play. So maybe let's close Keynote first. Let's open it again. Timestamp new log. My so for example podcast.txt and we're gonna choose a folder. So right now I'm I'm just trying this uh, feature to save um title. Let's say um right let's say we put here test I don't know. So we just try this out, remove the title. All right, so if I press double click here, why is it telling me to open all the time? Oh, 
oh maybe okay maybe this is not actually running the action it's just telling me to select an image so reload icon just do this all right so i guess i can select the icon all right so it's just to set up an image so it doesn't really let us run the thing from here so the action doesn't really run and uninstall Okay, I guess I, we cannot try it today because I don't have the device yet. So we'll have to start setting up later, but you know, let's see what this one does. API token. So this is to open an app. This is to run a hotkey. All right, so for example, we could say open Photoshop. We could, so this is a shortcut. So let's say that, okay. So we could take a screenshot, for example. Record on OBS. Oh, th this is nice. So like we can, if we can record. And yeah, so with OBS, we can probably switch on and off sources, audio sources, start or stop streaming, uh, recording, um, different parts of audio, maybe like change them. So in here, all right. So yeah, so this is in a nutshell what the Stream Deck is. I wanted to take a look because I'm getting the device soon. And of course I'll be playing with it and I'll be customizing it. And you know, I wouldn't be uh, here like, um, maybe going and looking to the screen and then changing here. I could have buttons to like change the background, change the the scene, so I could quickly uh, change between different scenes, and I wouldn't have to be looking at that uh, screen all the time. Maybe I'm gonna now look at the, the the device here on the table. All right, so let's try to see what what can we see if we put this. Here, how did I do this last time? All right, maybe, maybe just this way. Okay. Right, I guess uh, commenting a bit here, um, YouTube stat for nerds, new latest is, uh, I'm doing some work, so inter interesting interaction design work. Transitioning a desktop mouse app to tablet touch, replacing a ton of interactions on hover. On hover. Um, I dove into the Google image and paper to better understand the fundamentals. Awesome. You could tell me a bit about it because I haven't been able to. Intrigued by what the Runway ML Fox just announced with an infinite canvas UI metaphor for video editing. Oh, that's awesome. Infinite canvas UI metaphor. I haven't seen that really. That sounds super interesting. 
also did a dive into what the Disney animation folks are doing on realistic hair and other improvements to animated movies. I could go. It seems like you managed to uh, stay up to date with many, many things, including, you know, this live stream and other projects. So let's see Runway ML. What is the latest? Where, where can I see that? Is that going to be on the Valenzuela B? And now I have this thing in the middle. All right, so let's zoom in here. Drone will create a new possible, yes, this is on text to image models and their impact on creatives. Here's my latest on the AI arts pollution we consider as an alternate headline. Seven years ago, back in 2015, one major development in AI research was. I guess this is a nice video to share. I'll have to watch it later. When you go at eight frames per second and the rest at 25 frames per second already provided from a GL, GLSL shader that re FPS a segmented person object using runway ML, state of the art optical flow, and in painting. Pretty cool. All right. Okay, so let's put this on the machine learning channel. I guess we do like for 76, we'll put the links here. Okay, so Rob says he uh, confused companies. So we just really video board a 2D canvas for storyboarding and clustering. It lets you edit video on an infinite canvas, a really nonlinear editor. That's pretty cool. Redact.video. Eight hours of videos in minutes, not days. Okay, nice. Well, thanks for sharing. Okay, so I am going to now check on time. So we've been going for 38 minutes and I'm gonna take a quick break. Mm. I'll leave a question. So maybe Rob, you're online. Um, what do you think could be the, the best way to define a roadmap for future live streams? Like what content has been the most interesting so far and, you know, for you or, or for other people as well? And what format could we share? Um, perhaps shares DNA with your text-based editor for Mac OS. You mean Descript, the the podcast editor where you can edit with the transcript? 
Uh, so yeah, the the question was like, what things from the live stream you're liking? What are you not liking? And you know, if you're live, you can reply on the chat. If you're not live, you can just comment on Discord or or on the video comments. So as I said, I'm going to take a a quick break. So I'm gonna come back in, in a bit, and we'll be back with the live stream.
Okay, I'm back. Where were we? So... Yeah, so actually, I mean, I completely... Let me put this here. Mm. Let me see if I can, if I move this, okay. Okay, so here the, the question that I asked was, what are you liking the most and the least about the stream. So again, I will ask for everyone, if you want, you can also um, send your questions on the chat later or, or on the messages of this video or on Discord. Just let me know what things, I, I probably should do a survey or something. I'm, I'm thinking about that. Uh, but yeah, it, it's basically, what are you liking? What are you enjoying? What are you um, not enjoying, right? Let me see if I can maybe move this. Okay, now I can put my hand. So this is pretty cool. Sorry for me doing this, but I think it's really cool that I can pass my hand through this YouTube thing. And if I go back, I can put it behind it, right? <laughs> that is a really silly thing, but I had to, to do it. All right, so... Uh, that's a question and Rob said what might be interesting is to choose a goal that's realistic a few months out, possibly more, and then spend at least some small part of each live stream talking about where we came from, where we are, and what we'll try to accomplish in the live stream and the rest of the week. I think extending your suggestive drawing work is an obvious candidate, like if you had gotten a PhD versus a master's, what would you have built, researched? I feel like this stream needs a longer term theme. I feel this way about lots of other channels too. I I couldn't agree more. Like I've had this in mind as well. And I wanted for that, like the suggestive drawing work to be the narrative of the channel. And I mean, it was for a bit, but it, I know it's gotten a bit out of hand now and it's not that realistically, but, um, you know, we can get there really easily. I The one thing that has been challenging is that what I really wanted to like attract also more audiences, release many of the videos that we've done on the live stream, but um, the, the energies to edit and the podcast and the live stream are wearing down because there's too much content that I haven't edited that we need to get out the door. And I'm trying to tackle that in parallel as I do this. And... If I have some structure to do that where I don't have to worry about it that much, I should be able to spend more time thinking about the channel, the project, and the long-term goals, right? I do have this slide which sort of states it, but I think I need to edit it because I haven't I haven't looked at this in ages. Uh, this is, and again, like I know that this thing is in between. I'm not used to having things in front of the screen. So these build the collaborative AI sketching platform. This is the overarching goal, right? Like this is one of those goals that we were uh, trying to aim for. And maybe this is a side product or something like that. If we actually get to build something like the suggestive drawing app. Uh, but yeah, thanks so much, Rob, to for being there and for letting me know that, you know, that is something that you think could be the... Um, the solution, right? Like we, we could do on the on the stream. And yeah, we'll we'll work toward that. So toward that. So don't worry. I mean, we have time, I think. And I think that we need to do live streams a bit more focused and a bit longer as well. In terms not longer just for them to be longer, but to actually have more time to develop things, right? Um I've shown this the drawing.com so we do have this app that we deployed and yeah i think we just should continue continue developing it and actually making it 
work with WebSockets and deploy some deploy some services, right? Some some things there. All right. So um let me see marker goals and live stream topics. All right. So if we go here to the um, all right. So this is notes for an incoming interview. So let me uh, take a look here at the live stream page. Yeah, somebody should like help me out with all this stuff. Okay, so lives, we do have many live streams here. Live 75 was getting simple live. And live 76, we've taken a look at the stream deck. Excel, Stream Deck for Mac OS, and uh, we've discussed a bit the live stream goals. All right. <coughs> we talked about the job descriptions last week, uh, tutorials to record. I, I've been looking at React and Next.js and, and TypeScript lately, probably not something to do today. I had the this Raspberry Pi and Adafruit's Braincraft. have some notes here. We do have it here. I'm not going to play around with this one. This is probably more a topic for, for, the, um, for the weekends, if I could find some time on the weekend to do a live stream. Regression with Keras. Mm. TensorFlow.js. Yeah, maybe, maybe what we need to do is to plan in advance, like what topics we may think that we're going to cover on the live stream. So for example, I have this thing with with regression here, and that could be a live stream, right? Like we could go through this and, and take a look at this example and go step by step and do it from start to end. Another format that I've thought of doing is a, you know, like a Zoom meeting where like, maybe it's not on the live stream, but I go through, I prepare a tutorial and basically like a workshop online and people can sign up and, and also be hands-on and, and do it. Mm, okay, so if I look here at my calendar, it seems like for one, two, three, at least for the next three weeks, that's 9, 16, and 23rd. 9, 16, and 23rd. So that's going to be live probably live 77, live 78, so it's June, and this is live 79, June 23rd, 2022, and this is going to be also June. So yeah, we could define topics in this ones in advance, like try to, to have them in mind so people know what's gonna happen in, in each of this. I tried to do this with the calendar before, but it didn't really quite work out for me because I wasn't really doing it. And this will probably be July, July 7th. Mm -mm. All right, 
All right, so we th this is great a great exercise because that means we have seven live streams before the end of the season. I think so. I don't think I'm gonna stream on August. So we do have uh, this is a wrap for for season um, two. We haven't really met the goals, so they were not super realistic, or at least I didn't focus on them as much as I should have. And uh, so then what I'm gonna do is like I'm gonna try to to define a bit more what these live streams are gonna are gonna be. And uh, we are going to try to have topics uh, scheduled in advance. All right, so this was 76. And so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put this behind me. And I'm going to create events for all of those live streams so you guys know when those are going to happen and when we're not going to have a live stream. I think. Um, maybe the week that we don't have a live stream, maybe we don't skip it. All right, so I'm saying that July, so June 30th, I'm not live streaming. Could I live stream maybe the 28th? Maybe. All right, so tentative here. And that will be July 5th. All right, and that would mean, so that's not July, that's not June, July 5th, that's uh, June 28th. So if this happens, we'll move and, and have one more live stream, so we would have eight live streams in the season. would be July 7th. Okay, and I'm gonna try and share this sharing get shareable link copy so live stream calendar end of season two that'll be there so i posted the um, the calendar here so this would be the live stream calendar end of season two is there All right, so we have 81, 82, that's gonna be July 14th. Okay. Eighty-one, eighty-two. July 21st and then 84 July 28th end of season 2 
All right, so this is what it looks like. So we've scheduled a bit in advance. And yeah, we just have two months and I am trying to plan ahead to see what we're going to be doing. So if you have any suggestions for topics, uh, this is the moment you can put them. Uh, so let me put here, would you create a post for the channel jobs? Um, what does, so channel jobs, post for the channel jobs. Uh, can you, what, what does that mean? So do you mean this job descripts, descriptions? So Rob, uh, you ask, I'm not sure if you're online at the moment, but you asked on the channel this, uh, let me, yeah, I don't know if you're in both places, but, uh, do you mean for the job descriptions I mentioned on the live stream? last week yeah so okay so will you create a post for the channel jobs uh yes i intend to make a maybe it's um something on the yeah, okay, thanks for pasting, W, Rob. Yeah, I think I do have to, let me take a look. Yeah, maybe maybe we need to create a page, something like none of them are hiring or um, jobs, I don't know. But let, let's just make a page. Uh, jobs. Mm, I don't know what. Hiring. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's hiring or jobs, but whatever. All right, so. All right, so let's zoom into here
in the meanwhile here's a listing of potential positions all right we're gonna copy from here so that would be sketch editor sketch data set creator podcast editor podcast publisher i really hate that this happens all the time okay podcast um guest researcher podcast so uh, video editor machine learning content creator okay so yeah so this maybe post here on discord <clears throat> So here's an in-progress page um, for the jobs I'm hiring for. Okay, I'll put it in general as well, just in case. All right, so yeah. Um, yeah, and I'll share in other channels, and I do need to, um, I do need to define this a lot more and and see how it is. But for now, I think it's it's okay. So we put jobs. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for for asking for that, Rob. I think that is super helpful. Ah, oh, I really hate this. Okay, so topics, mm, what other things? So ML cores, TensorFlow model formats, base model architecture. It would be good to have some sort of basics to go through. Mm, collaborative AI sketching. We have the entire project here and we'll have to clean up all these intentions. Um, mm, mm, mm. Yeah, okay. There are too many things. That's that's a problem. Uh, there are too many things to do and not enough time to cover them all. But yeah, probably you know that that's something I need to do is uh, and I'll add, I'll add it to my personal tasks. Mm, I do need to write. A list, write a list of job descriptions. Okay. And just a note on what I released last week. So let me put, oh, did I move anything? No. All right. So marker mm, announcements. So I released this uh, It's Nice to See You in Person episode. So it's a short episode. It's just 11 minutes. And it's me reading two of my essays. And yeah, there's just a like a interpretation there. Like I have to read and I kind of re-record it after recording on the live stream because I didn't like how it sounded. But I think it sounds better now. And... You know, if we go to the sketches page, I've published a few things. So you can read the essay here as it was written originally. The second part is this one back from Atlanta. And then I wrote this one, another one of those. And 
what do you want to be doing and this one yet another call so this is on the sketches um, blog at sketch.nono.map but I'm still publishing something every day so this is for example um, something I published this is today right like get python version in python and it, this is just like a sort of like a code tip then we have the release of the podcast that you can watch also on on youtube it's actually a video here the following and here you also see the those posts but then there are others that are just you know this is just like a quick post that I add to the blog uh, this one as well weekends should be weekends get image with the verbose flag um, I don't know there's like create oh I've written a series of uh, next ES app uh, posts just really quickly on how you can create apps with Next.js and Next.js and TypeScript on the command line. So they're going to show up um, often. Another reason to write down what you think. Just saw here a typo. I don't know. There are a lot of thoughts in there and you can you can take a look at the blog. All right. So Yeah, so Rob says here, uh, recommendation, take some time to think about live stream themes you're passionate about. Is suggestive drawing plus plus is something that you're passionate about right now? That might be, I mean, that might be not like super, super excited about um, all the work that has to be done, but I think there are some pieces of it that really call my attention and I really would like to engage with them and but yeah i don't know i mean that's that's like something we need to sort of figure out what's gonna happen okay mm -mm. great all right so what else are we doing today so we are what time is it so it's seven so we've been going for an hour and a half now and Hmm, there is something, so let me, let me put here a marker, um, getting um, modified date or like a creation date uh, file time stamp. Okay, so I do want to see if it's easy to get in Python, the timestamp of a file, the creation file, in order to see basically when I create a, a marker, like if I can guess how long it passed, like at what timestamp the the thing is from where it started, right? From where the recording of the file started. I have a, where did I put that? Okay, I think I have that on my board here. Yeah, so JSON now, stream deck workflow right so this is kind of why i revisited the the stream deck because i had been thinking of buying it and then after i saw this i think it's um it's awesome right so he has a macro here where he can with one click on the stream deck he can uh, make a note on with a timestamp of like how long from since the start of the recording and what it is, if it's a call, a digression, a mistake, let me read them all. 
So we have cough, digression, mistake, overtalk, uh, section break, swear, technical. And these are things that can be fixed in post-production. And if you have notes for them, you don't have to go through the entire file and listen again, just have to go to those sections where you put a mark, right? So this is like, tell me how panelists cost you extra work, right? It's a funny title, right? So you have these um, notes, right? Like it's basically telling you at 11.20, something happened. You got to clean up here or like maybe there are markers of like topic changes, right? Like I'm doing here with the live stream. And this would be like the bottoms for him. Like plus is like just adding something and plus on the pen is like something that he's going to write. Uh, something manually and take the time but that distracts you in some way and this is keyboard maestro which you know i i don't have i do use typescript how much is this no subscription you can purchase it now for 36 dollars and use version 10 indefinitely great but what is this really? So type clipboard. Yeah, I'm not sure what this is, but I'm sure that whatever it is, we can code it in Python. And this is the idea, right? Like that you would be able to, the note file generated by the script looks like this. And this is what I want. This would be a timestamp that can be used directly on a YouTube video, but I want to add it to this script on the composition. So it goes to the podcast, goes to the YouTube video and everywhere else. And okay, so let's look for that. I kind of said why I want to do this. So Python get creation date of file. Like this has to be pretty straightforward, right? All right, so if we are here, we have a Conda um, window, so I can directly probably run this. So probably just do Python, and we're using version 3.9.7. We're gonna enter, and we're just gonna say import OS, and we're gonna do OS path, get creation time, and then we are gonna have our file. So the idea is, um, how can I do this quickly? Um, all right, so the idea is that I do have a like a, an ongoing live stream. So Rob, if you're still there, one question that I wanted to ask, is it okay sometimes, right? I mean, I know it's okay because it's the live stream and I can really <laughs> choose to do whatever, but the live stream is supposed to be about machine learning mainly and machine intelligence, right? But there are many other things that have to do with the getting simple podcasts and automation. And I just would like to hear other people's opinion on what happens when you think that you're going to see things that have to do with machine learning, but end up being something else. So I'm not sure if I need to specifically mention that it's about maybe creative machine intelligence and automation or like product not productivity i wouldn't use the word productivity but it's about tinkering with software and developing with code uh, things all right so here um, i could quickly so we have it on the desktop i could quickly change this recording to and i'm gonna pause the sync of dropbox which doesn't seem like it interferes a lot with my recording um, we've almost not lost any frames and i had everything here for for a long time so i think we're pretty good today okay so i was um, going to set the desktop of the place to save files here that i recorded and note how let's let's move this aside or maybe let's just open a window like a folder with the desktop here so we do have these files here, mm. recordings, and what we're going to do here is 
I'm going to say that the recordings are going to be saved not at desktop, but at desktop recordings. All right. So if I turn this, you know, we're getting this file here and I can split. So this will create a different, you know, it will create different files every time I split. And the latest would be the one with the current ongoing recording, right? So you see this is 98 KB. And if I enter the folder again, it's 2.2. So it's actively recording. I can pause it. You can see the size here as well, 2.9. And I'm just going to resume it. I'm going to stop it, right? So we're going to close it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to record. So we have this audio being recorded here. And uh, really what we want to do is a script that simply reads this. So we're going to get the path and we're going to put this here and try to see what creation time that was. All right. So that seems. Okay. That is actively changing. So I'm unsure what this is. So this was created. I don't think the creation time should change, right? Okay. Created stays the same. Mm, maybe. Okay. So to get creation time, but only on windows. Okay. So cross platform way to get modification time in Python. It returns a Unix timestamp. To get a file creation time on Mac and some Unix based. Okay. Oh, is that all right? So let, let's try this one. So, um, recording path is, and we're going to put this one here. So we have our recording path variable and we're going to do here. So what is that? ST birth time. So OS stat and then recording path. What do we get there? We get some stuff and then we do ST birth time. And that my friend, that stays the same. So that's always the same and we can get the modification time. So we just need to get, so that would be um, creation time is this modification time or that that's the date right it's os path what is it get get modification time of the recording path okay and we're going to call this creation date creation date print well, or like modification date, right? So modification date, we got to update it and then print it again. And this is actually going up. So um, we'll do a function here that will get like um, elapsed uh, seconds since start. And we'll just put here that we want a path. Our function is going to get just to return that OS is that recording. So this is a path as the birth time. So this is basically the, um, the current um, length of the file. Well, the, the current modification date, which should be whatever time it is, which we could actually just say time now, right? Like the, the current time, because we don't really need that. Okay, I, um, okay, and that's good. And then we'll get here OS um, path get modification time. No, so this is the start time and then we'll get the path get modification time of path and then we'll subtract that. All right. So we'll do elapsed seconds since start and we'll do recording path. 
and we do have elapsed seconds. All right, so we've defined the function now and then we just need to call it. All right, so now we do have the timestamp. So let's say, um, so 300 is five minutes, right? So this has been recording for four minutes, right? So if you see it there, just put this in here. So when we get to five minutes, we'll see it. Hopefully that's 300. All right, so you can see here, right, that we're gonna get 300 when it gets to five minutes. There, all right, so. Okay, so we're getting the right time and then we'll just have to um, parse it, uh, parse this into an integer and then convert it into a uh, timestamp. So like timestamp that looks something like for example, if it's um, 305, it should be something like this, right? That's basically 300 divided 60, and then what's left is like five. All right, so I do have a function like that in, in PHP. What I'm gonna do right now is make a, so let's go to the, the live folder. So this is projects live, and then we're gonna make the directory for live stream 76. And then we'll do a script that is going to be called um, uh, elapsed um, time since start of pi. We just save the code of that function and we'll refactor and I will basically, um, let's see. All right, so this is the code. It's pretty simple at the end. All right, so just with this function, if we have like a um, recording path, we do get the, um, okay, let, let's make a, a quick recap of what's going on here. <coughs> All right, so here we have a recording that is going at the moment. And we're getting the, the lap seconds since the start, right? So we get seconds as the function says. So if we get the seconds, uh, elapsed seconds in start of the recording path. And let's try that this works. So we don't really need the REPL anymore. All right, so we go to projects live 76. And here we can do Python elapsed time since start. Okay, and we need to print here our seconds. All right, so here we have an active, um, oh, no, okay, I see something. I don't know if I overrode things. Okay, so um, here we're printing the seconds. So if we see here, okay, eight minutes. So 480 divided 60, that's eight minutes, right? So I'm gonna quickly grab a function that I already have. And, oh, not here. And that should be on app. Okay, let me take a look at where my seconds to timestamp function is on, um, this is PHP. So where are you? Oh, it's just here, okay. So podcast. So this file actually contains the function that we need, but in Duration string to seconds. Okay, but I want the opposite. It's like seconds to string. 
duration to string, right? So this is the function. So we're going to give it a duration seconds to our minutes. Hours, minutes, seconds. Okay, so this is what we need. Okay, so we have a function here. We can repurpose it. So it's going to be duration seconds to hours, minutes, seconds. And we just have here a duration. All right, so we say that hours is floor. And now we just need to convert from PHP to Python. So floor. So can we do that here? Floor 3.4, no. Um, Python math floor. Okay, import math, math floor 3.23. All right, so we have to import math here and exit. All right, so let's continue here. So we have, mm -mm. And this continues recording. So the audio is still is recording. Okay. Okay, so we do have mm, this. So we do say here, math floor, and that would be, Okay, so we're passing actually seconds, so that's easier. So seconds divided 60 by 60. Okay, so this is the number of hours and so minutes, math, floor. So that's seconds divided 60, 60, and then seconds equals seconds divided 60. right and then we return um, hours minutes seconds all right so let's take a look so here we would do um, duration duration to um, well what we want to do here bro is hours minutes seconds equals and this and then we put the seconds here so we can do here hours minutes and seconds and we're gonna call this function now all right so we do have 12 minutes and 16 seconds right so if we take a look at the in here now so now we get 30 seconds right 12 32 and this is what we get here 1233 and now it's going to hit 1240 at now okay so 40 i'm not sure if we're a bit behind maybe we're like slightly behind i'm not sure mm. but yeah whatever i mean maybe it is that we need to seal this yeah maybe we do need to seal this all right cool so now we need the latest function which is duration to string because we want the the paddings mm. right and okay so this would be duration to We can do um, duration to string. So seconds to timestamp. And 
we can do here, we'll do hours, minutes, and seconds, and then we'll do, for example, we want to return something like this. So we'll do here timestamp, and then we'll do hours, minutes, and seconds, and then we'll print here the timestamp. And that's our that's not really our timestamp, right? So the timestamp should be wrapping with this function. All right, and this would be our timestamp. All right, so yeah, so that that is matching, and you see what happens here. Like the the first zero zero for the hours is not showing, so we need to simplify that, and we'll say. Um, okay, so the first thing is to do the, the padding. So let me remember path. Uh, so Python left padding zeros and Z fill. All right, so hours string equals Z fill. right int object and we probably need to do this all right so we got zero zero all right so let's do that for minutes and seconds as well so minutes and seconds and minutes and seconds so we would get here um, return f and we'll do here hours a string minutes a string and seconds a string all right and then we get right so we're getting here the the very same timestamp as above so let me let me move this here so if i execute this command so we get and you know i'd rather go a bit be so behind than uh, than above so i will say i'll do floor here so we can directly you know have the we we can adjust like slightly later depending on the recorder that we're using and um here so now that we have this thing what i want to do is to remove this zero zero if the hours are zero because we don't want to have like the the training empty hours so we can just simply do here if hours equals zero will return the same but without the hours right so here's our timestamp all right so um, Okay. And lastly, we can do a helper. So timestamp. Timestamp. Or path. And then we can do these steps here. print timestamp for recording path and we'll remove all of this none recording path none okay so we just need to Right, so could return here. All right, so that is now working. All right, so this is working now. So we have the timestamp for the file recorded, and note that if I split this, now we're 
okay, we're tracking the same file. So uh, one thing, you know, we have these functions now. One thing we could do is we could list a directory. So we could have an input directory and then track the latest file. So the, the most recent file. But, you know, I, I guess like we would have to track Hmm. We'll have to track either. Yeah, I don't know. At some point, we'll have to start and have a path for a given file if we want to track a like a specific file. But also, we could recording there. We could say, okay, this is our recording the directory. Uh, recording there, and or maybe we could we could import glob from glob import glob, and then we could directly do glob recording there and everything that is a given format so i for example for file in glob print file file name all right so we'll leave the timestamp for now oh okay so we need to put this basically to match the the pattern of this right so we're getting these both of this and i guess uh, what we could do is find the path that has the um, the smallest creation time and All right, so this is like file path, not path, uh, so file name. And we'll do is, um, uh, two, 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 most recent creation, creation. So modification date is going to be this get m time for the file path if a modification date is greater than most recent modification date then we're going to set that the recording path equals the file path and then later we'll print the recording path all right, so we're looking for this one. So it's a 27, right? Like you see that this is the latest. But if I go now here and then I click on split, we're going to create this one at 30. And the purpose of this is that I'm going to click. I'm going to execute the script again. And while the latest file was this one, now it's this one, right? So that means that we can now dynamically at the moment Mm, select the the latest uh, the most recent recording file and uh, that will be our, our recording path right so now we can print the timestamp of that recent uh, recording so here 34 35 right those, those are the seconds and if I split it there will be a new file and the timestamp The timestamp uh, is still the same. I'm not sure why. Oh, because I have to put here most recent modification date equals modification date. Okay, so now I do that. All right, so that's 36. And when I split it, now we're getting the latest. And if I split it again, I get the latest again. All right, so with this, um, we could now have a like a file, like a destination file. So let's basically, we don't need the recording path. We just need the recording directory. So we're going to put this at top and remove that one. 
and what I want to do now is so let's move this up and we want to have an output so let's say timestamp so log path and you know it could be that within the remote directory or something uh, we do just add a so let, let's do it this way always path join this plus um, log.txt right and uh, what we need to do is just like file open so let me see file open site no no ma let's see if i have it all right so we can get from here this is the code append to the end of the file all right so what we do here is that when we run this so we have the, the timestamp So we're going to open a file. And then we do file write adding text to this document. And we're going to write this. All right, so we'll put here our stamp and then my marker all right let's see if this works so this would be log path we have there and marker text and then we'll write here the marker text and we're going to put here this just in case that we can do a like a line jump all right, so let's take a look. Let's see if this works, right? So let's start, let's remove these things. Let's um, split and start a new file. So we have this 34 file here. And as soon as I call my script, we're gonna see a marker here and uh, we're going to, to add text to a file there to the log file. All right, so what did we call the file? Log. Let's put here markers. Like that better. All right, so boom. All right, so inside of markers, right, we have 30, right? That was the, the timestamp that we had. And if I if I move this aside, let's let's just put this below here. Um, so you see this is 40. So let's make a new chapter at maybe second, so at minute one. Two, one, go. All right, so we've made a marker. Well, it was 59 more or less, right? And now, so let me command line. This is arc bar site, no, no, ma. So I'm looking for my own. Mm. Well, all right, so let's take a look. What Python are we using? Three point nine. All right, so a really quick break, and I'll be back.
Okay. This is the end of the break. Let's continue. I'm just gonna do a few more things there and we'll be ready. So I'm trying to make this into a command line application, right? Like we've what well, we've created today, so it can be called from maybe the Stream Deck or from other places. So in Python 9, we can import arc parse and uh, we can directly um, create an argument parser for the command line. When we call this as a command line uh, program, right? that would be something like if I, instead of doing that, I added here something like text and then I put my marker here. Uh, the first thing that we can probably do is um, rename this. So let me rename this file to add marker. And, you know, the arguments could be the, the directory, the file, and the in the what is the other thing the um, the text right so we add arguments like this this is actually a boolean but we want to add a string argument and and then this is how we use the features right so we parse the arguments and then we for example here we have a feature argument and then we do opt a feature and then that we get its value so let me see if i have Another post. Um, mm, mm. All right, so let, let's get started with this really quickly. So I'm just going to copy the Python 9 code and close that. And we've changed the name of the file. So we have to open this folder okay so we have add marker this is the new name that we've put to the script and all right Okay, and uh, what are we doing here? Okay, so I've pasted this, so I'm gonna leave the import arc parse right at the top, and I'm just gonna add the code for this below. So we're gonna have here, add a marker, a timestamped marker to create a marker for an ongoing record. And we're going to have three arguments. So the text, so this is going to be our, our text, and it's going to be, so let's see. arc bar string we just want strings right so we're gonna have type is gonna be string and default is gonna be marker marker text all right so that would be that would mean that we can print the text here so opt parse and we'll, we're gonna try that right now and I'll explain so this is opening a terminal let's see if this goes and all right so now we have this is add marker and then our text is marked but we can say new text and new text okay so yeah so we need to either escape like this or with like the um, the two quotes 
Okay, so new text works and we could use it already. Uh, usually, uh, what you do is this def main. Let me see. Main. Let's see, we have some of this. Yes. No, okay. Okay, so we're just gonna do this here. So we're gonna escape all of this. And what I wanna do is now make a function. So here, add marker. And this function is gonna send the text of the marker, the, um, the path. So this is gonna be the recording path or the recording there. And we don't have add marker, so we need to make it in here. So basically this is what it is. Mm, this is it, so def add marker. And we're going to get text, we're going to get recording path and recording directory. And these two, you know, they don't need to, um, they can both not exist, even though they wouldn't work. Um, if uh, recording, well, that, that that's how it is. We'll refactor that later, but if we have the text, then this is what goes here. So this is the text here of the marker. And the recording path, recording directory, so we can set this here. Mm. So we're gonna put two more arguments. It's gonna be the um, uh, directory. So this is the directory, maybe just there and the recording file Let, let's just do file and okay so default is gonna be for this the folder that we have right now and for file we don't really have a default file because you know, that would be hard. And this is uh, directory containing recordings. And this is gonna be path to recording file. So, uh, here, actually, we don't have um, the possibility of using recording file. So this would be opt file and opt there. And uh, that should work, but you know, here we are setting the recording path with this logic. So using the recording there and uh, we don't need this if there is a path. So if recording path is none, then we would do this to determine the, the recording. And we can put here. All right, so let's, let's test it out. So we do have the log path, which is gonna be All right, so let, let's try it out. So this is at 14.09 and we're going to see, this is adding the marker. Actually, we could, if 
print the marker text here for debugging purposes right now. So, okay, so let's see new text. Bytes not built in. Uh, expected a string, bytes or path like object. This is on dir. Okay, let's do directory because there seems to be a uh, built-in. Okay, so let's do here. Hmm. Recording path and recording there. Okay, so let's do that. Recording path. All right, so let's let's try again. Okay, new text and that's fifteen forty. Now we have fifteen forty six. Okay, and now we're gonna say okay. One two three. One two three. All right, so if now I access this, I see that one, two, three, I say at minute 15, 54, right? And if I split this and I go to minute 15, 54, I probably won't hear it, but now I'm gonna say one, two, three, right? One, two, three, one, two, three. All right, so if now I, right, so we have the track of where in that file that, that I say is, right? So now we can um, right here and we could add, for example, break marker or introduction marker, right? And those things are going to be logging for the file and maybe what we can do is that we could mm, check the latest and then put the name of the file on top right like if you check that the latest timestamp is smaller than the current timestamp you could append the path to the file on top or something like that that would be really cool so that that's a potential improvement um So this would be a to-do here. So to-do if last timestamp is, if last timestamp is greater than, well, that wouldn't work all the time because you could have no timestamps. Um, it could be that you check in some way. I don't know. I mean, I think that that's okay. Like we don't, Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe that that's just a nice to have. So um, the logs file, we could, the, the log name, we could also choose. So for example, but yeah, I mean, that, that doesn't really matter. So it could be on, on the desktop. So Python get, um, All right, so for me, because this is gonna be hard coded at the moment because this is more for me than for anyone else. This is just an experiment. I'm gonna get my, hmm, I have recordings OBS, hijack and zoom. And I guess it would be, I think the best is like the log might be having the name of the file. That would be the best. So maybe what we do, so we don't define this, is that if you have a recording path, the log path is actually um, the recording path 
and then appending the markers, but not like this, just like a concatenation of recording path dot markers or something like that, or slash markers. Yeah, dot markers dot txt. Uh, that way, um, if we, you know, if I create a new file and I'm going to do this now back at, so I'm going to stop this recording and I'm going to set that the recordings are going to be saved at recordings hijack once again. So I'm going to set back my path to recordings hijack, which I'm not sure if I can do things like this here. Let's try it out. So we're going to remove this recordings folder. We're going to get the path to recordings hijack my machine. And that's going to be it. We're going to try to do this. Mm, okay. Is that going to work? Let's see. So this is now starting a recording. And, uh, you know, one thing we need to do is to make this not only get if, but um, uh, MP3 and, and other formats. So to make sure that it works with other formats. So we're going to add introduction path, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So in get M time. So we don't have anything here, but we do need to get here users. No, no, Dropbox. Probably that's what it happens, right? Yeah, okay. So now we go to hijack and right by my recording with the same name, I do have this file. So this is the introduction. And I'm going to be able to make new things here. So for example, um, today and... Um, here like um, linear regression and I've added those chapters and they belong to the same file right so introduction to the linear regression and we can tweak the format later and what happens now is that if I split it right like now it's going to detect the file name or, or, or the modification date and let's actually print here print added created created marker for recording so maybe we can get here um, file name is going to be os path base name recording path and we'll get here the well, recording name and uh, We'll put here the marker text. All right, so let's try this out. We're going to open this here. So this is for our, our old file. And here I'm, I have a new recording. So I'm going to create one of this, right? So, okay, so this is duplicate. Create the market for all right. So we have this here and we have this other screen here. I'm gonna split the file now. And we have this recording. So I'm gonna create a marker. So it's gonna be again introduction. And that's a second line, right? And we have this file here, so below. And now we can create linear regression. TensorFlow light models, right? And that now works in a way that is going to allow us to add this to the stream deck or to some other device. So when we click or when we tell it to add a, a marker, then it's going to add it properly in this file um, here. 
and I guess, I guess, I want to only guess that if I, you know, if I were to specify a, let's say that here we specify a file path, is this what the variable is called? Yeah, like I want to specify a specific file. I will just put the path there to that file. And then it's creating, you know, a marker at the end because it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't modify the date. So we're just adding markers to the same file here, which means that if I were to come to, so let me disable the preview so you don't see me a thousand times. So if I were to click on start recording and then we go to my OBS recordings, now this file is being um, recorded, right? So this file is the file of the, the active recording that we have here. So you can see the rec time here, 15. And uh, we could also use this marker setup to put here the, the path, right? and an OBS studio video recording marker. I don't know, so we do that. All right, so it's told me that for this, it's added this and now I'm gonna do um, intro, well, like outro and we add that as well. So now all we've done is in here, in this markers file, we do have the the marker at the proper timestamp. So this is 46 and let, let's check that that's working properly. So if we go, let's see how I can do this. Uh, all right, put this here, I'll put this here and I'm gonna put it here, just test. Well, actually what I'll do is that I'm gonna write here the timestamp that I see, so zero, zero, or like without that zero one thirty five and I'm gonna press three boom. All right, so you see it's a bit behind, but because of the delay that we saw before, uh, which I don't mind because I think it's okay to go a bit behind. Um, so let's say here it's gonna be fifty boom. Okay, forty eight. Mm. All right, so let's try a 210. I'll do it when I see the 10. All right, so 28. And let's see what happens with the um, with the recordings from Hijack. So if we go to this Hijack, which seems like it's still been actively modified. So I go, I get the, the path and I put it there. Mm, the timestamp I see here is four 19, so 4, 30, let's do 30, 4, 3, 2, 1, go, all right, so 29, but it's really 30, so we're saying 30, but it's actually 29 on the file, so it seems like, you know, there is like a slight delay, which I don't understand why that happens, 1, 2, Three. Okay, so this one goes above. Oh, oh no. Okay, so we are huh, we are putting this down, and this one. So this is ahead what we're seeing, and All right, so I guess I will get, so here we're getting two points of difference normally and here we're getting one. So let's do 529 now. All right, so we're getting one and I think we can simply uh, change that here. So we can, instead of doing floor, we're gonna do ceiling. Yes. 
and we're gonna try that now. So let's see, this might be a bit more accurate. And then we can choose if there's an offset or something. One, two, three, and five. Okay, so now we get the the accurate measure there. Boom. All right, so with uh, this file, it's super, super accurate. And let's see with the OBS file again that we're recording. So I can see there below that is four. I'm going to put 445, three, two, one. All right, and that is pretty, pretty good. So let's do once again. And that's going to be 57. Boom, boom, boom. Ha, huh, that's weird. Hmm, okay, so there, there is like a slight delay, but I don't mind if, if it's a bit behind. Like I prefer it's a bit slightly behind. All right, so now if we go to our, and I'm gonna stop the recordings in both places. If we just analyze what's happened, I can close this, I cannot close OBS. And what's happened is that we have a series of marker files here each one representing its own recording, which, you know, for now, uh, I think it would be good to clamp it to the latest in the directory, but um, we need to support more, we need to support more extensions. So let's actually, let's actually just try that quickly. Last thing we do. Um, Python glob multiple extensions. That's something many people have looked for. Oh yeah, I remember doing this, okay. Okay, so Okay, so for now, even though there'll be more like optimal ways that we can use to do this, what I'm gonna do uh, to do this quickly and su at support is that instead of just doing this glob here, um, we're gonna do recording paths and we're gonna do add here in an array. Hopefully I can do, Okay, so patterns is going to be this. Okay, so we'll do this and in patterns. Okay, so recording paths and then we're just going to put, okay. So I have mp3 wave. All right, and for now, I'm just gonna up. Okay, let's see if this works. Let's see if this still works. So, okay, so we're gonna record one last time here. So I've and I'm going to run this command once again. 
but now without a hard-coded path. Function has no attribute blob. Mm, okay. Stat path should be stream bytes, blah, 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 not list. Okay. Okay, so let's print recording paths to debug this function. I expect it indent. Okay, so. All right. Okay. Okay, so now we get this lists. All right, let's try this out. All right, so let's try just this. File types. We don't need this anymore. Recording paths. Recording paths. All right, let's see. Okay, so now we just need to do four path in recording paths print pp all right let's see quickly if this works all right that seems like it's working so we got mp3s ifs and other files all right so we are set to go so we have the this and now we do have for recording path, for file path in recording paths. All right, great. So now this has created a marker for this, that is our latest recording, uh, 2008, and now it's 2012. And, you know, if I were to like stop this and then start this one, that is an MP3 file, then we're now adding new file mp3 and we're adding it here awesome what will happen if we have all of the recorders at the same time i guess it is consistent i guess but we could also clamp it to we could also clamp it to a specific file, right? If we want it. All right, so that is, so let's just try once more. If we remove this one, we're 
clamp into the mp3 a new mp3 and the new mp3 and then the ive all right it seems like it's working properly and that's it okay so stop recording that let's close this and now that we have these i guess um this is something we should add to the live stream repo Okay, so we're going to make directory 76. I'm just going to paste this and we're going to All right. So this has been a long live stream and I know that this part maybe for some has been a bit more boring, um, but this is ready, so now it's up online. You can take a look at the ad marker script here and I'm going to put it on Discord also on the um, on the chat and uh, here we have it. All right. All right, we did it. How long has it been? Probably two hours and something. So it's a long live stream and I am ready to go. So let me get back here. Right, everyone, um, let's see. Well, thanks a lot for watching. Please leave a comment on the video if you enjoyed it, like it with a thumbs up if this is the kind of content that you want to see or if you want to support the work that I'm doing here. And make sure to subscribe if you want to go, if you want to get notified when I go live next or when I upload new videos. Thanks a lot. You can join us on the Discord server. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.